Hello there everyone and welcome back. It is time, finally, for me to show off my Imperial Navy fleet. Because all the other weeks with the Orcs, Eldar, Chaos, they were basically my first attempts as playing those race there, at least for the purposes of multiplayer. Here, the Imperial Navy, I actually had a chance, at least in 2v2, to level this up all the way to level 8, get almost my entire fleet up to level 6, if not level 7 or more, and I'm ready to dive into 1v1 and to watch it all get massacred before my eyes. Reassuring, isn't it? But nonetheless, let's have a quick look at what I'm looking at here, because it's probably a little bit different than what you may expect. I have three Dauntlesses Mark II with the torpedoes, and all of them, every single one of them, basically has the Imperial Navy trait on them. So if you thought I was complaining about Orcs before, about the raw numbers I had to field, just wait till I start overwhelming the field the battle with the, a bunch of Cobras, which is essentially going to be the same thing. It's a little bit different. You don't, I don't recall ever seeing anyone except for maybe one or two other ships using the Imperial Navy, so this could end spectacular for me. And then we have my Define Ascension, which was the cruiser that I had for my campaign, the very first uh, Mark I cruiser. And so I decided to name it the Define Ascension. It's basically as that exact ship was designed for the campaign, more of a support, long-range harassment type of ship, with the if with its potent lance able to chase as well, if the circumstances allow for it. What is going to be useful for this fleet remains to be seen. And now for my cruisers, we have two dominators here, which used to be tyrants, but then I decide to maybe switch them out in the case I have to get paired up against Eldar. At least that's the initial intent. Because these things would be pretty good at taking out frigates, doing a crap ton of damage to their cruisers. May not fare very, very, well, very well against battleships there, but at least they can start whittling it down. Again, I have little experience with 1v1. Because 2v2, I only have to deal with either a Void Stalker, the Eldar battleship, or at least two cruisers that are much, much smaller. So, it remains to be seen if this strategy will carry on through. And for my third cruiser, which I'm contemplating switching because I don't think it's actually working as well as I intended, is the Gothic with its lance batteries for like piercing through heavy armor as well as more torpedoes. With the Space Marine favorite, it'll kind of give it that long range like strike potential there with a lightning strike. I'm contemplating getting additional teleportarians for it there if I do decide to keep the ship, but that won't be until level 8, if not level 10. Now on to my dual overlords, which also have the Imperial Navy trait. Because with the one thing I've decided on, since I'm going to be using a bunch of light cruiser Imperial Navy there, it it means a lot of my ships are vulnerable to potentially insubordinating at complete randomness. Because of like, if I have like three or six of these, that means three to six times the chance, the likeliness of them insubordinating. So really putting it on my higher class ship is so they don't end up getting screwed over by RNG, which is bound to happen each, every so often. Not to mention it makes them super reliable, which I'm kind of fond of, quite frankly. Reliability and consistency is pretty key if you want something to salt, whereas the Imperial Navy remains to be seen. And finally, finally, I thought I changed the name there because literally when I bought this retribution, it was also called the Define Ascension. I was going to change it to the Savior Retribution, which was my battleship for my campaign play. But, now we have two ships that with the exact same name. Identity Crisis as much. But, as you can see, it's also kit out there. It did used to have, where, where's the upgrade? The upgrade for like the short burn torpedoes, which I have given to every other one of my uh, cruisers that have torpedoes. But, I have recently decided to switch that out for maneuvering thrusters because I wasn't really getting the tor torpedo shots I want for something so big and bulky and slow, especially with this retribution being like half the speed practically of like everything else in terms of its mobility. So I decided to give it maneuvering thrusters to kind of even the odds and make it just as maneuverable as everything else. And also, Instead of like additional shield strength, which I, as you can see here with every single else, I've focused very heavily on my shield durability. Kind of like trying to weather the storm in a way. Whether for either for both Chaos and Primary Eldar, if I can get in close enough to them. 
With Retribution, since it already has so much shields, I just gone straight for the false pattern to give it a chance to just strap negate damage. And I'm once I level up further, I'm probably gonna enhance those shields more, at least for what needs them there, because a lot of these cruisers still need to get false pattern shields for the fully unlock their at least shield survivability and durability. So let's get started. That's my fleet in a nutshell here. My main form of detection will be the Widowmakers. That's my main strategy I've been using because its sensor range is so massive, almost to the point where I think it's overpowered, to be honest. It is going to be essential for especially for this fleet, especially with the long range fire that I have in my Overlords and Retribution. And Cobras, of course, are upgrade as well. And Firestorm is in the Sword Frigates. I haven't even used this at all during my 2v2 so I just haphazardly threw modules on there with extra turrets to kind of help shoot down fighters and torpedoes for essentially the bigger ships to give them covering fire basically and it transports upgrade to kind of like keep them invisible when they're sprinting and durability so hopefully they don't get shot destroyed in an instant here's hoping now let the real fun begin I talked long enough as is about my fleet this is going to be diving to my very first real 1v1 match. Because there have been one or two cases where I accidentally went to 1v1, but I haven't really committed to those. So I hope those players I ran up against got enjoyed their free wins. Because now I am worried I'm probably going to die horribly here. Being so high leveled, even though they're not quite level 8 or 10 yet, they are upgraded and fitted enough to at least be able to stand a really decent chance against a level 10 fleet. If I do encounter them. First up, I am fighting a Space Marine. So, heavy armor, very mobile, but I have the better raw firepower. The trick is micromanaging it in a way that I can deny both the boarding torpedoes that he's going to field and his fighters. He relies so heavily on boarding. And just because I have yet to field a, ret a battleship in all my YouTube videos, my YouTube series, I'm going to field that first. What do I need support? I love the idea of Dominators because they can go right through shields. Don't know if it's a smart idea or not though. Really top heavy if I go that route. And we're going to put two... Yeah, we're going to put two Daunt Daunt Dauntlesses here and two Widowmakers for Vision. I really am kind of against feeling two Dominators unless it's Eldar, but the burst potential off the Novacan in close range is going to be really handy when their shields are down. Again, the micromanagement with three Imperial Navy ships is going to be a little difficult. Because I'm going to have a lot of micromanagement to do. And ooh, look at this field. It's littered with everything. Lots of high spots here. So it's a good thing I took those Dauntlesses with the... What is it? The Augur Beacon that I can just slap on top of the Space Marines. Because that will be very handy here. The question is, where do I expect in the field? This is going to be a lot different than just my Orcs, technically. Even though... Orcs were a lot more chaotic with the raw numbers I had to field. This one is, has to be so much more strategically sought out. If anything, I want to have my Dominator in back, so that way it can utilize its uh, Novocaine a little effectively. And have Widowmakers on the side. So I think we're all set. Time to group everything up. And I'm f suspecting he may be fielding a Battle Barge. Three ships, hell. It wouldn't surprise me, honestly, if you feel the two battle barges. It, it makes it so much simpler to control now, doesn't it? So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's get started. And I heard a beacon, so where is it? It's going a little bit to the right, so everything's turning here. Yes, Admiral. Everything turn, turn, turn. Widowmaker number two, you can, you're safe to keep on going. You should be safe. Uh, with this angle here, it's really hard to judge, really, its positioning. If I rotate the camera so it was straight forward, I probably would do that to kind of make it easier to read the beacons, but that's going to be 
That's gonna really throw people who are watching off, I feel like. Ship it's because it's not gonna consistently be in the same direction because it won't won't be able to snap in. Also, yes, my Widowmakers need to turn off that auto attack. I had it on there and it's probably not a good idea to have that on right now. Awaiting orders. So, we dodge that, Awaiting keep the Widowmakers orders. going, and let's see, get ready to engage. Your command. I'm okay with throwing one beacon on easily enough. Just get some free damage in and follow up with the second beacon. Enemy ship sighted. Yeah, two Your battle orders. barges. I suspect it as much. Ship ready. Little excessive, maybe firing the can right away. But we'll see. Identify me all you want. I know what you're fielding now. Now kill this thing quickly. Going silent. Go silent. Well, after the torpedoes are done firing, I guess. Yes, Admiral. Damage teams. So Are move out of the way of the now? torpedoes. Someone is relying a lot on their phys their back boring torpedoes. So I can get some free shots in. It's gonna be really difficult to fight this off. Really durable. My Dominator is crap until the shields go down. But I can't torpedo, so let's get these torpedoes going, shall we? So what are these things going after? Because they spot something. And of course, damn it, Silent Running just ran out just as the beacon finished. Going silent. Oh, this is not going well, but if I could dodge the born torpedoes, I'm good. That was bad. That was really bad. I could kind of dodge that to an extent, though. It's, at least it's boring torpedoes, and yeah. Once I'm outside of his sensor range, that's fine. See? Wasted his boring torpedoes and wasted his uh, fighters. But now I've got to get through those shields. Come on. Tell me those are going after the Widowmaker. Nope. They're going after my retribution, so this is going to be fun. The good news is I can kind of avoid this. Nah, that's not didn't work as much as I like. Those torpedoes are really resilient. So this is going to take a little bit of micromanagement, as I said, but I got torpedoes to do that just fine. Well, that was nice of them to waste a beacon there on for nothing. For so, get these things going. This is not going well because I am mis micromanaging this really horribly. These boring torpedoes are doing work, but. Let's see. Let's try and get these things in a stasis bomb, would be good. Of course, Dominator's not exactly as effective as I like, and let me get his recharge going. Come on. My Dauntlesses are doing crap there again. Bad micromanagement. I should be fixing this somehow. Make this top priority. It's reached. Yeah, boarding's doing work on there, so. Come on. Get the boring going. There. Awaiting orders. Come on. Torpedoes are off. Yes, Admiral. At, least, at least I could shoot down some of those fires easily enough. Your orders. Now keep those torpedoes going. And I should be invisible to some extent there. So, keep these things going. Hopefully get some torpedoes going. Try and micromanage as best I can. And he lost his port, so he has no boring torpedoes until he repairs. So that's good there. Kill one of these battle barges for me, please. That 
That's only going to be short-lived, but okay. Okay, dodge that nicely enough. Now I just need repairs. Actually, let me turn this around. Now that I have an opportunity to do that. That actually would be pretty good. To turn this around and get the main guns firing, because I did lose some on the other side. Come on, fire those. That was bad shot because I thought my t rotation was going. Oh my god. That was awful, wasn't it? Now I can dodge that. Come on, turn. That was not too close. Too close there. Okay, more torpedoes off. Let's actually get some hits in. That would be really nice right now. Someone's getting desperate there. Let's get this Dominator in a better position too, because Nova Cans are doing crap. And, of course, I picked a bad time to repair it, didn't I? Speaking of repairs, let's get this thing out. Let's see. Apparently, even with the Imperial Navy thing, I did insubordinate, which is interesting. Now, get some. Tor if I could get these torpedoes in still, that would be nice. Got some torpedo hits in there. Not enough firepower to matter at the moment. But I gotta get this Nova Can going. I'm doing a bad job with this thing. Now, tank the shots. Get this thing to shoot down the fire as best they can. And lock down this one battle barge. Okay, and locked on to my... Apparently my Widowmaker, which is interesting. Now, unload. Unload and hopefully do some damage. Now, if I can get a Nova Can on this thing, that'd be great. Ship ready. Not gonna happen, though. Especially with this rotation of doing working horribly for me. Awaiting orders. Okay, one battle barge is gone. I took him now, try and tank this to the best of my abilities. Which is not going to happen because those dang boring torpedoes are really hard to take down. Got some fires going. If I can get one torpedo in, that would be nice. Now he dodged it easily enough. It's sadly my retribution is gone. It was a good attempt there, but... Having a Novocan did not work out for me. I should have suspected as much, in all honesty, that he was going to go like a Devil Battle Barge. Such a s much more simpler style. He's definitely not going to kill it there, but... More torpedoes would have helped me a lot. That Dominator did not do what he should have done. I was expecting more of Cruisers. Silly me for thinking he would try and be varied rather than so top heavy. I could have crushed him with just simple, with the gothic there if I had fielded that instead. Let's be fair, Lance is going through the armor. Not quite upgrade the benefit against shields though, but more torpedoes and lances would have been great, so. It seemed like a bad start. It's a learning experience, mind you. And really horrible misplay. And everything's pretty much out of the match for now, so. Not a really good start. But I did take out a battle barge with me, so I guess I got that going. But I have renowned to kind of repair everything. Dominator's out though, so I might as well save my repair for these cruisers, because I can still go overlords at least. Unless this thing repair, and I'm not really obligated to stop playing the, the Imperial in between recordings, so I could do more 2v2s just to get some matches in to let it repair naturally and then keep the renown for when things really go bad for me. Because I don't plan on... Oh, what I'm saying is 
my YouTube series here is going to be all the 1v1s. My first attempt diving the 1v1. So let's get another one in. Sadly, the Savior Retribution is not going to do it. Or going to be present for this one or the next, possibly. But it had promise. There was a lot of potential there. Now, data recovery. This is going to require speed, possibly a lot of cruisers to be able to deal with all his boring attempts. And we're fighting chaos, so this is going to be amusing. How do I want to do this? Torpedoes would be great if I can get in close. That's the catch. Gothic seems pointless here, which is kind of why I was contemplating not switching that out to something else. Because while good against space marines, it's not going to have the reach it needs. And I want to feel in our cruiser, so let me do take the Gothic. Because I don't really need so much frigates here, I just need a lot of boarding options to steal a plan. In case things get really hectic. I lack a lot of long range fire. Not, not that it matters too much, because I think I'm going to be going straight in there. Or at least doing a very aggressive dive when I get the window. That is the idea. Where I can execute on that's not going to be difficult to tell. Because stasis bombs, I can't... Let's see, is this straight up a battleship? Yep, this is a battleship, so I have more boarding options because he chose a bigger ship. And I could probably just swarm them and outnumber them. I got, the trick then is making sure my ships are not so easily shot down because I have a lot of vulnerable light cruisers. Now, if it wasn't for this damn asteroid field in the middle there, I could just deploy everything right in the middle. Which would make my life a little easier. As it stands now, I may have to split them up. So, Dauntlesses are going to get behind them again. They're, I don't want them to sprint too far forward. We don't make her to kind of spot everything. And... We'll see how this goes. Maybe I should consider grouping up the Dauntlesses. The light cruisers, the Dauntlesses, kind of like how I've been grouping up my orc ships. At least that way I'll make it a little more easier to manage, maybe. We'll find out. So he's got a beacon there. All of them are firing beacons, so... Setting course. I can dodge most of those except the one here, which I can just silent running, so that's fine. I could just silent run. I'm gonna just silent run the hell out of that. Enemy ship sighted. At your command. Of course. Let's see. So stasis bombs. Boost on out. Orders received. And that can just go right on through. I have silent running on, so I'll just. Well, that was kind of the stupid idea, wasn't it? Alright, so stasis bomb's going. Let me get this Gothic recharge. Awaiting orders. Unfortunately, I have no recharges here on this Underway. thing. And again, that asteroid field alone is what's killing me here. Initiate emergency repair. So, I can do this easily enough. This is unfortunate because my other ships are out of the way. Bec Mortal Stories, damn asteroid field is getting me killed. So I can hide, get some torpedoes in. And so, nah, the Gothic's already gone. That was fast. That is unfortunate. This is not what I want. Now, can I kill something there? Because he's just lancing me down and... This thing's getting lanced down, so... Try to soak what damage I can. I don't have enough shield transfers to justify it just yet. And that silent run was a stupid idea. I think I was not contemplating how small this map really was.
Okay, so those those bombs did nothing. Torpedoes did absolute crap. And now let's get some torpedoes in, shall we? Ah, that was awful. I thought my torp my cruiser was clear then. The clear it apparently it was not. Let's just focus on killing some of these things, shall we? Let's focus on killing some cruisers. If ideal. It's not likely I'm going to kill. And his thing completely vanished. That, that does mean it was destroyed, right? Yeah, it was destroyed. So... I have no generators, no detection, and I why is that thing still alive at point blank range? Speed set. Hot. Yeah, this these these people know their stuff there, Your basically. Orders. There, that's one down. I'm gonna have to ignore the battleship for now, just for the sake of keeping this fleet alive. It's gonna be a loss, but by God, I'm gonna take some of these things with me. I'm going to make sure this happens. Yes, there. We weathered the storm. Understood. We're putting the punch to him there. Yes, I forfeit the battleship, but damn it, I wasn't going to let him get all, get away with all those free shots and that bad start. Kind of wish I had more shield transfers, to be honest there. Especially on my Mark IIs. Because that's something I could do if I find the Widowmakers, I can keep them alive. The point of the Dauntless is with the probe though, is to kind of like be a second, like my secondary option. Because by the time the Widowmakers are gone, normally I've already done damage to them. Ideally. In which case, I can easily throw a beacon on them, that gives me fission, at least of those ships I put it on for practically the entire battle. It's almost impossible for them to, lo to lose for me to lose vision from there on out. I just feel bad. The more of the story there was that one asteroid field and he, ex he capitalized on that either flawlessly or he just got lucky and hadn't really considered it, I'm not sure. Really hard to say because he did autocast the beacons it seems like or well not so much autocast them but he had to have known where I was would be deploying. It's kind of like that Inquisition like was it? My last match has the orcs where his in the Imperial Navy with his Inquisition there revealed oh, so three out of my four cruisers immediately and never even barred to sh identify any frigates. Even though that was like, seemed like autocast so it seemed like a same situation there. But he had to have known where I was deploying, right? I don't know. That baffles me a little bit. That just shows how little I know, huh? Now... We got upgrades here. I like to put ratings on there to kind of like re increase its resistance because it's ideally going to get bored there more often than not, you would think. It doesn't have the firepower to justify a master gunner. And I don't care about navigators because at this point, unless I'm really concerned about game levels, that I don't care about keeping these, these things escaping really quickly there. Only exception might be like data recovery, which we just did. So, I, my opinion could change there, but does not seem as important. And speaking of keeping these things alive, at least this one Mark II is going to have his Foss Pattern shields to help resist a lot of damage. Especially with really good shield transfers, which I kind of wish I had more of. I'll need to be mindful how many ships have that f shield transfer, because it's going to do amazingly well keeping my light cruisers alive, if he does choose to focus on them. Well, that was my first two matches there. Both were failures, but at least against Chaos, I felt like I got a moral victory there. So I can't feel too bad. 